entire the Murant, Murant uh, Potomac River coal plant, and um, and uh, to oppose ill-advised, um, sorry, <laughs> uh, transmission and coal ash projects. Uh, before coming to the Sierra Club, uh, she worked as an organizer and advocate on fair trade policies, both in Texas and in Washington, D.C., so please help me welcome oh. Kate. So yeah, as, as Tyla uh, mentioned, the Clean Power Plan is the primary vehicle that the United States is using right now to try and um, sort of ensure that we are showing the world that we are willing to lead on reducing carbon dioxide emissions. And so it's a very um, sort of exciting time that we are actually finally seeing the United States um, step up into that role. Of course, we have not been in that role in the past. Um, sitting out of agreements like the Kyoto Agreement. And so uh, this is a, an important time for us to continue to show that we are really committed um, to this effort that of course was, was reaffirmed with Paris and, um, and the President signed the Paris Agreement on Earth Day this year, which was very exciting. Um, but we want to just make sure that everybody is aware of, of what's going on with the Clean Power Plan right now and also what's going on locally to sort of bring this back home because climate change is such a big issue, right? And it's a global issue. And it's really, I think, about making sure that we're getting more folks involved and informed about what climate change is and how it's actually affecting our lives now, um, which is why, you know, I think uh, Tyler wanted me to be here tonight and, and why we're really carrying this out in a variety of ways in Virginia um, to make sure that we're getting more of those folks who historically may not have been uh, willing to accept that this is a reality. Um, and as unfortunate as, as it is, of course, we know that it is a reality and it's something that we can address. Um, we absolutely have it within our power to transition to cleaner sources of energy, and so um, we're doing a lot to work towards that. Um, so just to re um, revisit for everybody to make sure that we are all on the same page, the Clean Power Plan is an initiative that President Obama uh, has taken, and he, um, he proposed this just several years ago. Um, it was finally uh, adopted uh, last year and released by the Environmental Protection Agency, and is the first step ever of the United States to reduce carbon dioxide emissions from our power plants. And so, as you all probably know, most of our electricity does still come from fossil fuels, right? We, we burn fossil fuels in power plants, and a lot of those um, are, are still coal. Um, of course, natural gas is becoming much more popular now, um, but we are really um, making an effort to transition away from that. And this initiative sets a goal of reducing our total national carbon dioxide emissions 30% by 2030. And so that's a, it's an ambitious goal. Um, I, I think you know, some of us may, may want it to go even further, but regardless, it's a really important first step for the United States to be taking to show again that we're leaders and not just talk about it, right? Not just, not just be talking the talk, but really walking the walk. Um, so that initiative um, has gotten a lot of support um, from not only the environmental community, but many other communities. And so we've been able to work with very diverse coalitions on this effort, which is fantastic. Um, as some of you may be familiar with down in this area, as we're especially interested in working with directly impacted communities who are dealing with the effects of sea level rise uh, and other types of extreme weather events and so forth, um, so that we can really bring, again, this issue home. The Clean Power Plan at this stage, as Tyla alluded to, is unfortunately um, on hold at the national level because of the Supreme Court decision that took place um, just a few months ago. Uh, we just received word this week that the D.C. Circuit Court will be hearing oral arguments on that case in September, so we expect that to be moving forward, and are very confident that that um, ruling will be moving forward in favor of the Clean Power Plan uh, continuing to, to regulate carbon dioxide uh, because of previous court cases that showed that carbon dioxide is in fact a threat to public health under what's called the endangerment finding. Um, so right now, we are continuing to work with the, the governor, um, Governor Terry McAuliffe, and his administration to move forward on this effort and plan for complying with this standard, um, for clean air, this clean air standard, uh, regardless of where the Supreme Court is at at the moment. 
Um, we did also hit a, a setback um, in the general, general Assembly session this year, unfortunately, though, um, which I think is important for everyone to be aware of. And it really goes to the heart of um, the, the politicization of this issue in our political system right now, which is so unfortunate. Um, many of you are probably aware that conservation issues and environmental protection has not always been so hotly politicized. Uh, it has not been so divisive on one or the other side of the aisle, but unfortunately now we are seeing um, an extraordinary, uh, extraordinary amount of money that is going into our political system um, from fossil fuel interests and related industries. And um, I've actually got a, an article on the table in the back if anyone is interested in picking it up because there are groups that have actually admitted to involvement in uh, what is, has transpired and passed in Virginia and what uh, many are trying to pass in other states, which is a budget amendment that removes the ability for our state Department of Environmental Quality to work on reducing our carbon emissions um, and a plan that would actually comply with this federal standard. So unfortunately, um, the state DEQ Department of Air Quality will no longer be receiving funding to do that work in the, um, starting uh, July 1st. And as a result of that, we will be uh, working with the administration to come up with a new plan and actually expect very soon to see a plan from uh, the governor's office as to how he will continue to pursue planning for this despite that action. Yes? So in the southeast community of Newport News, they have, we worked with Sierra Club to try to get air quality monitoring. Mm -hmm. Is that the type of thing that you're talking about that they wouldn't be able to do? That's a really great question. It's actually not related okay. to that. Okay. Yeah, fortunately, as it were, right, we'll try and look at the sort of glasses half full <laughs> perspective. Um, they are only specifying that funding for the DEQ cannot be used on complying with the Clean Power Plan. So other work related to air quality protection is not being affected by this budget amendment. Very good question. Uh, but but it, is, it is a really unfortunate setback. And again, it shows how important it is that we um, be involved in who our political leaders are and working with those who are willing to protect the environment regardless of what party they're affiliated with. Um, so we are um, going to be moving forward with a variety of different tactics to try and ensure that this process moves forward. Um, and, and I guess I should just step back again and say, this is so important because carbon dioxide is the single um, largest greenhouse gas emission that we put out into our atmosphere every day. Every time we turn the lights on, every time we, we plug something in, that when we're getting our electricity from fossil fuel sources, there is a power plant somewhere that is belching out carbon dioxide emissions and, and without the clean power plan, there are absolutely no limits on how many uh, pounds of, of that carbon dioxide we can be emitting into the air. So it's really a critical standard, and it's one that we're gonna continue to fight for, and again, we feel very confident that it will be upheld in the courts. Um, in the meantime, we're gonna continue to work on holding the polluters in Virginia accountable, and that includes Dominion Virginia Power, who is really the leader of the efforts to block these standards in the state. Um, of course, at the national level, there are many others um, involved, but we have um, recently released a report on uh, the American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, that some of you may have heard of. It's very closely associated with the Koch brothers, another fossil fuel industry um, that obviously is very well funded. And um, those, uh, and Dominion is a member of ALEC, and there are many uh, legislators in the state of Virginia that are also members of ALEC, and they're working together in a concerted effort to directly oppose and, um, and remove the opportunity for us to move forward on addressing greenhouse gas emissions and transitioning to clean energy. Um, so we're working on holding those polluters accountable, and we're also working to hold the, um, the sort of obstructionists in our General Assembly and at other levels of government accountable because um, we really feel that it's important that folks be educated on these issues, and we're working to help inform them about the realities of climate change um, and make sure that they understand that they're actually you know, um, putting the, the health and safety of their uh, residents and constituents at risk uh, by refusing to take action on this important public health issue. 
Um, related to that, um, there is going to be another event this Saturday for folks who, who might not be going and heading down to the beach. Um, we will be at the Dominion River Rock Festival, um, and there will be a demonstration there where we will be blowing the whistle on Dominion, um, essentially calling them out for their greenwashing as they hold a huge concert festival there every year, right on the James River, celebrating the river, and it happens to be the same river that they've got the largest coal-fired power plant in the state set on just a few miles down, and they are also currently dumping coal ash wastewater into, which some of you may also have seen in the recent press, um, and there are multiple lawsuits going on around that. Um, so we intend to call them out on that. Um, don't worry, we've coordinated with the band. So we have, a, we have t-shirts and we have whistles and we will be out there forming a line in front of the Dominion River Rock uh, Festival and we will be um, making sure that folks are aware of what's going on. So we'll be passing out literature and so forth um, and, and holding a, a press event there um, to recognize uh, what's going on and, and really expose that. Um, in addition, we're working on uh, developing a citizen's petition um, to, um, to basically not wait around for either the state legislature or the governor, um, if, if need be, um, to move forward on getting state regulations in place on carbon dioxide emissions from our power plants. Um, so that will likely be moving forward in the, in the coming weeks and months. Um, and will be an initiative that's directed um, directly at DEQ um, from citizens who will be um, hopefully coming together across the state, and I hope that uh, some of you will get involved in that effort. Um, in addition, uh, Senator Warner is um, a, one of our sort of key targets in this campaign. He and Senator Kane are both also really important in their votes in the United States Senate. Um, and that's because they are have, have historically not been reliable, uh, Senator Warner in particularly, um, on defending our need to um, support climate action. And um, fortunately, with so much activism recently, they've both been much more solid, and we hope to continue to see that. Uh, but as I'm sure you all know, it, it's really not across the board on fossil fuels. They tend to pick and choose, and, and oftentimes they're sort of um, supporting an above, all of the above uh, type of energy policy approach, uh, which concerns us because of the support for offshore drilling and a lot of the other fossil fuel um, extraction processes that we know can be so damaging. Um, so uh, regardless, we are looking forward to an opportunity to work with Senator Warner on June the 17th. Um, they will, he will be holding a Virginia Energy Policy <laughs> Forum, and uh, we have, he has a really, uh, I think, we think, pretty well-rounded program put together um, that we will have a role in and uh, several other environmental groups have been involved in. There are other industry groups involved as well. I think Dominion and uh, Honeywell and, and some others are involved. But we're making an effort to have a well-rounded discussion at that forum, excuse me. And I hope that some of you would be willing to come out. Um, and finally, I just wanted to say again that um, the Clean Power Plan um, is going to be heard again in the D.C. Circuit Court in September, and so we hope to be getting um, some, some good news out of that and looking forward to next steps on the process. And while all of that is going on, um, we are really encouraging localities also to step up and take the initiative and not wait for what uh, is going on at the state and federal government levels um, to be, you know, to be the end all be all of our efforts to address climate change. Um, and that's why I wanted to sort of bring it back full circle um, to the, the Paris um, Accord that just happened in, in December. It was such a landmark moment for environmental action at a global level. And part of what made that, um, that summit such a success was that not only did many nations, over 190 nations, come together and sign an agreement, but there were also initiatives by the private sector, clean energy industries who are coming together and are, are willing to put their names on an accord um, to ensure investments in renewable energy projects around the world. And there is also an initiative by localities, cities in particular, um, that had signed the Compact of Mayors. And that is an initiative where cities can make plans to evaluate their own energy usage and work towards um, reducing that energy usage over time with an ideal objective of going to 100% clean energy by 2050. Um, that it, the compact of mayors work is still ongoing and is a great opportunity for localities to get involved and again take the initiative and not wait 
um, while our you know, local communities and citizens are being affected by this issue um, to, to show that we're willing to be leaders. So um, the Sierra Club is working in Arlington and Alexandria, Virginia, and Northern Virginia, um, to encourage those localities to take on a goal that's even more ambitious, to actually go to 100% clean energy by 2035. Um, and that's a really exciting initiative um, that we're excited to be a part of. In addition to that, we are encouraging folks all over um, the state to get involved in this effort and work with your local elected officials on this. And I'm so thrilled that we have Mayor Tuck in the room just to, to be aware of this. There is more information on the table in the back of the room. And uh, I also have a few copies of um, an actual letter um, of commitment um, that is available online for anybody who's interested um, for uh, mayors to take. You can also do it in counties. Um, with the city, a city manager or city councils getting together to sign a commitment to work towards, first of all, evaluating energy usage in that locality and then moving towards um, a, a plan and a planning process that will actually get towards a reduction in total um, uh, greenhouse gas emissions for that area. So um, I, I guess I'll leave it at that and, and certainly happy to take questions if there are any. Okay, so we have some time for some questions.